What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and it's got to that point in the competition where I can finally start showing you some of the people that are going to be on the shortlist. So we're going to kick off with an entry today from Lord Wraith, who's brought us a Sol 3 planet drill and ore transport. So let's dive in and I'll give you a tour of what it is he's put together. And as you can immediately see, this thing looks pretty cool, especially down on ground level. Like You start to get an idea of the scale, it looks like, it looks like a big piece of earth moving equipment should look like especially down in amongst the wheels. But we're going to go around to this back end first and just explain a little bit about what this is about. So this is almost a rear trailer, except it has its own cockpit as well. And as we go around here, again, you'll get an idea of some of the detail that he's put into this. So I love the use of these buttons, for example, as almost light fenders. Don't know what you want to call that, grills over the lights. Still really like it. And again, there's lots of use of incomplete blocks to try and make it look more, more appropriate, more fitting. But this end is designed to be the cargo carrying end, and as you can see, it's a nice mix of small blocks and large blocks. I assume he's used these um, small ship large cargo containers because they're more efficient. I don't actually personally know the ratio, so maybe it's just for aesthetics, but it certainly looks the business down there. And this area, as you can see, is designed for the front section to unload into it. To so unload into this, a bit like a truck, and then this section can go in, detach, and move away. So if we come down here, I'm just going to show you quickly one of my favorite ramp actions I've ever seen, I think. So very nicely labeled, and the entire craft and the entire vehicle is labeled like this. And as you can see, hit that button, and that there is a smooth ramp action. I approve of that. So we're going to wait for this to come. In fact, we're not going to wait for this to come down. You get an idea of what that looks like. And obviously up here, we've got the same controls to bring it up. And again, all really nicely labeled. To put a proper bit of thought into all of this. But up here, we come up to the cockpit for this. Again, it's all really nicely detailed and he's kindly laid out all the controls in view so you can drive this around in first person, kind of like you want to. I mean, this is where things look like they should. You actually feel like you're down on a planet's surface. But we're not going to do anything in here particularly. You get an idea of what it's capable of doing. One thing important that you notice is control panel 2. This I really approve of. I mean, this is literally just the flavor you expect to find on something like this. Big, heavy piece of earth moving equipment. Yes, you should have beacons, warning lights, and all sorts of stuff. So really approve of that. But I am going to turn it off because obviously lots of lights, not great for your frames. So let's get off this one and let's go and have a look around the front. And while we're at the back here, first of all, you can see the sort of a boarding mechanism for the front end. So down here we have the controls for that. Again, all neatly labeled. Stand clear of moving parts I approve of as well because this thing will land on your head if you don't move. And you can also see the same sort of detail on the rear end, the nice lights. This is a work light that you can control from up the front that spins around, really illuminates what's going on behind. And you can combine that with the camera up there to help you dock these two craft together. And you can see they're merged together just there, nice and tight. And then one of my favorite features on the whole thing I just danger hot gases. I love the the use of the missile launchers half built as a chimney stack is just cool. But let's have another little further look around the outside before we jump into the cockpit because as you can see this has been put together as a very clever mix of small blocks and large blocks. Large blocks where they're appropriate for their function like on the drills at the front because you want the big ship drills. But then small blocks where they're going to give you more control over how it's laid out and how it's detailed and how detailed it is. And also, small blocks tend to have considerably less mass than the large block equivalent. So this is surprisingly light for how much stuff it's got on it. And again, as we look around here, you've got the same sort of details. You've got the warning beacons, you've got danger moving parts pointing at the various rotors and so on, so you don't get yourself in trouble. And then if we come around here, you've even got little access ways so that you can come down into this area and have a look around if you need to be more pipes made out of the rocket launchers going down there from the front, from wherever the engines might be. And we can go up over here and down to the front cockpit. Again, little flavor details. Don't step off the edge because it'll hurt. And here, we jump in. We can see the real controls. And this is where things get interesting. And I must admit, I spent probably 45 minutes an hour just messing around with this craft because it's very cool. So let's have a quick look from the outside. We'll just move up to this rock face. You can see the rear end is going to follow us in quite nicely. And let's get ourselves, I don't want to go too fast because this is surprisingly maneuverable. And stop, say about there, that looks pretty good. And the reason I'm in this view is because the first thing we're going to do when we're lined up, yeah, that's close enough. The first thing we're going to do when we're lined up to the rock face is we need to go to our second bar here and we're going to press six. And what that's going to do is move the unloading arm into position over the sort of trolley that's on the back here, whatever you want to call it, and get ourselves ready for unloading all the ore we're going to collect. 
So that's going to go up there, and then we're going to press 1 and 2 to turn the ejectors that are either side of it on, and they're going to eject automatically into the back. So let's let it, let it get up there. There's a nice landing foot to lock it in position so we don't jiggle it out of position as we're mining away. It does move relatively slowly, but this is all to make sure it doesn't damage itself. It's been built very, very cleverly in this respect. It, it's su surprisingly robust given it's got so many moving parts involved. So that's that now locked in position. Everything's ready for us to start mining. And what we can do next is hit three to turn on our drills. And then we could, if we wished, just turn on this piston and reverse it. And as you can see, that'd be going forward and we could even operate it a bit from inside. Looks the business from in here. I, I just really like sitting in this cockpit and looking around. But you can see, as, as you would expect, does mining in a straight line reasonably well, but that front end is not all about mining in a straight line. Oh no. So not only do we have this single piston offering here, we have another piston we can activate down there on 5 and 6. So if I press 6 on and then reverse that, most of that front end now starts moving, which is very cool. Speed things up a little bit, or in this case we don't want to because we'll probably go too fast and break the head off. But let's stop that piston for a sec. So let's bring it back a tiny bit and adjust our angle of attack. So. Let's stop that there, hit 9 to unlock the rig, and you can just about see the landing gear turning off at the back, and that's going to enable us now to tilt the entire front end. So let's just get it to a position where it looks kind of sort of sensible, and then we can continue mining inwards. Let's turn that piston on again, and off we go. Now, of course, there are a lot of controls for this, as you can see. Look at all these. No matter how well you're going to label things in the cockpit, you are going to make mistakes. I have broken this thing a number of times because I don't really know, as well as Lord Wraith does, how to use it. But it is incredibly good fun, just driving it around a bit like a Tonka toy, almost, mining away. I know there's some guys I know that will definitely have fun with this one. So all the information for this, links to the workshop, etc., etc., will all be down in the description down below. So make sure to check it out. Give Lord Wraith some love for what is a very, very cool creation. Whoops wrong one. Right, let's bring this back in again. We're not quite done with its tricks. So just want to give ourselves a little bit of clearance because what we're going to do next involves, you need the head to be a little bit clear of the front end of the craft because we're going to twist it sideways now. So you can see on 7 and 8 we've got extra rotors as well. If I was to, oh, if I was to turn that on it's going to go the way I didn't expect. If I turn that on you can see this is now going to twist that head around as well. And this can be used, you can now actually, if you use the uh, the right controls, and again, I'm still learning with this craft, so let's turn that off, lock that in position, and we can now use the rotor that's on its head, the one that's that one there, to mine in a straight line in that way we're pointing. It's very, very clever, the articulation on this. The only thing we can't do is pull the head in straight now. We'd have to straighten things back out again using these two rotors here before we sort of docked things back into position. You'll also be able to see that all the while we're doing this, of course, <coughs> excuse me, all the while we're doing this, there's ore popping out the back into our container on the back end of it and slowly filling up our cargo. So there you go, fully functional in that respect as well. The only thing left to see on this front end other than, let's bring these rotors, these pistons back in again now. And of course, we have the obligatory, alongside these are all similar controls to the other craft, where you have the ability to lock various bits of it for movement and to also control that rear hitching mechanism. We have the obligatory emergency modes. So let's activate all the warning beacons as we should. And ours, you can now see, this is one active mining craft. The only reason I haven't had this on the whole time is because, again, it does play a bit merry hell with my frames a second. So there you go guys, one of the coolest craft I've had in the planet's competition. There have been really good entries, but this one, definitely one of the ones that I'm having up there on the shortlist. Hope you guys agree. I would really recommend you go and check it out because I most certainly haven't done this justice. I'm trying my best to talk about it while controlling at the same time. You're going to have much more fun than I am trying to do this, two things at once. So go and check it out. I've also missed bits, I'm sure. So thank you very much, Lord Wraith, for your submission. This is very, very cool. Definitely going down on my list of things I'll go and play with in Space Engineers every now and then. If you guys did enjoy it, of course remember to give Lord Wraith some love on the workshop, but also please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really helps me and the channel out. And otherwise, I will catch you next time.